Hi, welcome to Sage Butterfly Designs. I'm Penny, and this is a channel about my cross stitch journey. My stitching, my designing, and some learning some new things along the way. I'm still trying to learn hard anger. It's not going as smoothly as I would like, but hey, practice makes perfect. And well, with my stitching, probably not perfect, but maybe good enough. <laughs> I hope you subscribe um, and join me on this journey. Um, have fun along the way. I laugh at myself a lot because I give myself a lot to laugh for. Um, I was watching Megan, the Seattle Stitcher the other day, and she shows her stitchy stuff first and then does a life update. So I'm gonna switch it up and do that as well. Um, I'll squeeze in the giveaways in there as well. Um, so the last video. I was talking about the Autumn Garden uh, collection of threads and how they had different designers do the different things. And I was like, I hadn't heard of anything from the Nashville market. Yeah, so I got an email saying, not an email, a text from Kim telling me, hey, there is something. It's called the Tea Time. So of course I go check it out. Beautiful designs. The, the silk threads are beautiful colors but not variegated so that was already a little mm, I love if I'm gonna spend the money on the silk and the, all that kind of stuff I'd, I love the variegation in it even if it's a slight variegation just it gives it so much more of the depth in the, in the stitching so I was tempted um, and the patterns are pretty but and I love some of the finishing. They had some finishing, like a little teacup um, frame and everything. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. I need to have it. Da, da, da. And then I started thinking about it because I am doing that now. I'm stopping before I buy and say, when are you going to stitch it? Where are you going to put it? When are you going to put it? Is it a seasonal thing? Is it something that's going to stay out all the time? That kind of thing. And I couldn't answer those questions. I was like, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I don't have a small house, so it's like, there's only so much room. Um, so, ha, avoided that bullet. So, I was like, ha, I was so excited. And then I started looking at other things, other new releases. Fell down a different rabbit hole. Oh, well. <laughs> um, so, I do have a pre-order in for the Nashville and I will um, tell you about that during the haul section. So I will show you what I pre-ordered. Even though I was trying to resist the whole Nashville market, yeah, I ended up getting snagged by it. Oh, goodness. So, Bo is currently, you might hear my husband coming and going. I get to what that squeaky door was. That's his office door. Um, I didn't close my door because I wanted to give Bo the freedom to come in and out. He is currently in the front room chewing on a bone. He may come in for a visit. He may not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> He's at least occupied with a bone right now, so I shouldn't be bothered too much. I don't have any FFOs this week, but I do have a couple finishes. One of them you'll be glad to see finished so you'll so I can quit updating you on it. And that is September. I finally got it done. I love how it turned out. Remember, I had changed over. Uh, I have to bend around so I can look. I put in this tree here in the basket and I added a branch. This was supposed to be a barn in the center and this tree was supposed to be over here. And I don't know why I don't have the pattern to show you the original pattern, but I put it, I already put it in the giveaway basket. So I don't have the pattern to show you for this one. You've seen it a hundred times, you know what it looks like. So, but I am finally done with that. Yay! I just hate projects lingering for too long. Unless they're like a large one. And that's like, I understand it. Like Tinctorium, my Chatelaine, is going to take forever. And I know that. So it hanging around forever is like, yeah, okay. I at least put some stitches in it. But when it's a small like this, it's like, that should be done. That should be done by now. It needs to be off my whip list so I can add something else. I'm trying to stay within reason. Although last year I was like, I will never have more than 10 whips. Now I'm like, 15's my limit. <laughs> keeps growing what can I say all right I have another finish just actually a start finish um, and it is the sweetheart tree and it's called what is it called blue mountain bunny and I love the variegation a little notice 
and then here it is all in a single color. And I pretty much stitched it as it is. I'll show you on this. This is a little bit more obvious. Right there's where you're supposed to put your initials. I'm not an initial person, so I just kind of added a little design. I grabbed this design and copied it over here so that it would just have two. No, I put a leaf in there, not that. Um, one of these leaves I put in right there and just have it curled under. Um, so let me show you. I think Mr. Bo's coming. There he is. Hi, Mr. Bo. Bo, come in for hello. You're already done with your bone? Or are you still eating it? Hmm? Can I come up and say hi? No? Okay. That's okay. You don't have to. I stitched it on 14 count pink Ada. I received it from a kit. Um, there was a kit from something else. Any rate, look how cute that turned out. Well, this is where I was saying I just kind of put a leaf in there instead of the initials. And I think I added that as well because it was just too much of a gap. But at any rate. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love it. It's so cute. So I wanted to go with the variegated threads because as I just said a few moments ago, I love the variegated and I didn't want it in these colors. So I wanted it more spring-like. So in deciding which one I was going to use, I chose the Dinky Dyes. I don't know how to say that word. Let me see. Is it going to focus? Ver Digus, Veridigus, I don't know how it is said, that thread. And I seriously have one strand left. It used up <laughs> one entire skein, but that's okay. I love it. So I'm not sure how I'm finishing it yet. It's just going to go into the it's finished pile and figure it out later on. Um, I might try to do some kind of a pillow with it. I don't know. Not sure. That's why it's just finished for now. So those were my two finishes. So I'm excited about that. Uh, it's always good to have some finishes. So let's talk about the whips. First one is Tinctorium. So that's my Chatelaine. I am still in part one, which is this portion the middle section here and last time I had just the bunnies and the hedgehogs done across the top row there um, here it is I, I printed off a stitched up version and you can kind of see it a little bit better than you can in that computer mock-up version um, yeah and then here is mine so I had the bunnies done and I so what I finished off was doing the specialty flowers and then there was the top border and there's some other little bordery pieces that went into there and then I started a little bit into down here or did I start going down this way I don't know I went down one side or the other <laughs> I knew I finished up here and started going out somewhere I think I went down this way that's what I was doing that's what it looks like to me but Whatever. At any rate, I got that row completely done. And now we're going to start. Once I get these other three, this three more times, basically, then I'll finally be done with part one. I started it June, yeah, June of last year. So it's not too bad. It hasn't even been a year and it's that far along. But as you see from the pattern, there's still quite a ways to go. So, yeah, it is gorgeous. I love it. I love the specialty stitches and learning the new stitches and all of that kind of stuff. So that's a lot of fun. All right, next up is my Lavender Mist, my Mirabilia. This is her pattern. And this is my Teresa Made Me Do It Sal. And... was crying about something I did some more of this light green here and I added some more into here and then I got those little white spots done so that's what I got completed since you last saw it the next one is the bunny garden by stitching with the housewives that there you can see it cute little pattern 
and last time I got most of the bunny done minus the little bunny the baby bunny so I had the bunny mostly done and not and I didn't have her feet done I just had like her dress down to here without the bunny and now she is completely done and she has her carrot her radish the little bunny the little bunny slippers so adorable um, I know I forgot to say I think on both of these actually Tinctorium is on 28 count computer from Zweigart. I put all of that information in the description because half the time I forget to tell you all. And this one is Aurora by somebody. Hold on, let me see here. 32 count Aurora by Silk Weaver. All right. And Bunny, this one here, this is on 32 count Lavender Cloud by Fabric Flare. And I started her on February 1. All right, next up is Summer Acorns. Sorry, I get distracted with things out the window. Um, Summer Acorns by the Blue Flower. And here's the pattern. And I am stitching that on 32 count um 32 count what penny exotic or orchid and i started that on february 10th last time actually now i know i'm holding it right i know this is on the top so that i wouldn't get messed up since it's a medallion the acorns here or bells i'm not sure which one that's what those are supposed to be acorns or bells and then i started working on the vine and last time you'd seen it i had like down to here done and so I got the rest of the vines working out and I'm ready to put the acorns here. And then we got some little squirrels that hang out on there. That should be better again. So I got some, just the vine work done, but then I gotta put in the acorns, the flowers, the little. So yeah, that's coming right along. I like it. So that makes it fun. And then I've got Floral Dream. You've all been seeing that plenty. I started that in August so you've been seeing it for quite a while and excuse my live threads here let me get that one out of the way pull it down okay so last time you saw her I didn't do any on this side so this side's all the same but this side I had just the yellow done down to here so I added in the green and I did all of the darker color from her shadow. So I got all of that complete minus that yellow. I had the yellow done last time. So I got quite a bit done on her. So she's coming right along. Be excited to see her finished hanging up in my bathroom. We got Santa Sleigh by Nora Corbett. That's 28 count blueberry I have like blueberry by crossed wing collection is that fabric let me put it right side up instead of upside down there we go yeah so <laughs> all right so it's Santa Slay Nora Corbett floral dreams Nora Corbett as well um make sure I get it right side up here all right so this is the sleigh it is on 32 count mint splash by stitched modern and i started this in november i love the little splashes making it look like snow um and i worked on the ribbons so before it didn't it was all just the dark colors and the green and i added the ribbons in this past stitching time so that's coming along well my last whip is Freedom by Teresa Kogut. And I am not doing the bird, so I am doing from this there. And last time you saw it, I had the bowl done and two leaves done. And that's as far as I had gotten. And now, I have the star and these flowers and the reason why they look all funky like that like very straight across 
that is the end of page one or the page that I'm doing. I don't know which page number it is, but that is the end of that page. So this is a separate page, which is where I'll be working next is going this direction. Um, for us, a pattern that is only, what is that, 80 by 106 or something like that, it's a smaller pattern. It's not that large. I don't understand why it's broken up into four parts. It's huge. And I don't know if do that, but it's like, it's huge. <laughs> and that's just like oh, one of the parts. It's like, it, it's huge. It should, since I work on good notes, if I need something bigger, I just scroll in. So I usually have a PDF, one PDF, and then I scroll into it. So having it on different pages, I'm like flip, 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 flip. Up, and it's like, it's, it's a little annoying. But I love the pattern, and we're going to keep going with it. But it's a little bit annoying doing that. So at least I can say I have a page finish because that is the end of that page that I'm doing. So then I'm going to go over this way and finish, and then I'll take the top parts. So it's coming right along. I love it. I think it's a beautiful pattern. I love the colors. I love, I do love it. So that's the main part, right? Okay, let me adjust things around a little bit here. And we are going to go into my starts. Um, the first one is a start and a haul. Let me reach over here just a second to get my stuff. Okay. And I'm sure you've seen it on other YouTube things, but it is the spring um, kit seasons with the Stitching with the Housewives. And it came with the whole kit and the finishing cloth, all that stuff. Um, and then here is the pattern. Sorry, I usually take them out of the wrappers so that they don't glare. But I'm sure you've seen this before on other YouTubes because... A lot of, I've seen it on a lot of people's YouTube so I know you probably have to any rate it is on 28 count pine board which is what they provided and I have the middle house done and almost that flower flower didn't quite get done last night so I gotta finish that flower and then I'm gonna head over here to the yellow house so I love the spring colors I think it's a cute little pattern um, so yeah um, I like it so well that March became a UFO. I decided I'm not going to stitch on March anymore. And I'm going to use the spring pattern for March. And it says on the bottom, Mar March, April, May. So I'm definitely using it for March. Most likely using it for April. But I think I'm going to do the May um, stitching with the housewives month to month. Um, I like that pattern. I saw that one online. And I do like that one. I'm not too happy with the April wand either. So these last couple of patterns have not been that great from them. I didn't really care for, I mean, March was okay, but it didn't like, I didn't love it. And yeah, it's kind of one of the things when you're going to one of these surprise things, as far as like the month to month or a seasonal one, you're not sure what the pattern's going to be. And then I just kind of question that. It's like, okay, I don't know what the pattern's going to be. Is it worth spending money on something that I'm not going to love or not going to do? So some of these clubs, I'm like, eh, it's kind of fun to get a surprise. But on the other hand, if it's not what I want, then maybe it's not worth it. But I do like this one. <laughs> so long way of saying all of that, right? All right. My next start was my little house. I started up on February. I put that one kind of in timeout. I don't, I didn't like the way the house was turning out. So I just went ahead and decided to start up on March. So there's the March pattern. And here is my start. And it's on a 14 count um, dyed DMC um, Ada. I'm not sure anything else about it. Um, I did switch up some of the colors. It had me using this green everywhere. And I decided I wanted a darker green for the clove tree things. And I'm also using weeping willow in here instead of using the um, pea pod. 
So I did change the greens a little bit. I added some greens to the pattern because I thought it would give it more dimension. So I have almost done with it. All I've got left is the top part right here with the flower and March, the bottom flowers and my border. So it's um, it will be done by the end of the month, hopefully by the middle of the month. So we'll see. But I thought it was cute. I liked it. Um, that over there. Okay. My next start. I was talking about last time since it was kitted and I was going to do something with the autumn garden threads. I decided on this pattern, which is flowers for fall. I decided on that one. And I started working on the border. Oh, I have a little needle minder there to remind me this is your top, honey. So I've got the flowers in the bottom and partially up the side. And I didn't get any of the flowers put in here yet. But I've only got one more side to the border to go. And then I can start working on the fun inside stuff. Um, this is a 14 count. Let me double check. Yes, 14 count vintage oak Zweigart. And I just started this on the 22nd, so I haven't been working on it for very long. In my last start, I started up on the Summer Fairy, the My Chatelaine Summer Fairy. Isn't she gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous? Part one is this top, well, actually, so it's this top piece here, and then just that plain board or not all these banners but just the cross stitch edge there I'm just going to do this part and I'll do the cross stitch edge as I'm doing these banners um, but this is part one is up here so here is as you see it goes way down <laughs> here is my start so Awesome, awesome, awesome. There are specialty stitches all in here and around in here, mixed in with some beads and in here. So this part here is done. There's some more swirlies coming right down here and a piece here. And then I've got two colors that go around this way. I think, well, I think there's a total of three. There's a red a, and then like two shades of green that go this way. And it goes just a little bit past where the hoop is. So I either need to get a bigger snap or I need to move my hoop around and that annoys me so I'm probably gonna end up getting a little bit bigger of a snap or as you see I just like the sides are fine so that's why I have these on there and as you see I got a lot of left over at the bottom and I was like that's just too much for me to try to push into a thing and I when I was working on it I didn't have my bandy things bandy things Bandy things. I don't know what the heck they're called. Bandy things is what I call them. Bandy things. See how that's holding that fabric there? Bandy thing. Um, I didn't have bandy things and I was too lazy to get up and get them. So I just let it hang there and just kind of rolled it around on my lap while I was stitching on this. So I'll get a bigger hoop and a bandy thing and put on there. <laughs> and then it'll be more of a easier to do. So I'm not sure what part two is because I didn't really look because I'm almost on part one. But I'm so excited because like I said, the other shadow line I've been working on for almost a year, well about nine months and I'm not done with part one. Of course their part one's a lot more in depth than this part one but and there's six parts to this one whereas there's four to the tinctorium. But I'm excited. It's turning out so pretty and yeah. Love it. So stay tuned for more on that one. So, okay, so those were my starts. Haul. Yay, everybody loves haul. Um, except for my bank account. My bank account don't love haul. Let me grab this real quick. So, first thing, um, I went to, I told you I was canceling out of my Teresa Koget Patreon. Um, again, it's that mystery. Don't know what the patterns are going to be. Or am I going to stitch them? Am I not going to stitch them? And to pay $14 a month is what I was paying. And someone said I got a pattern I liked. And some of them was like, eh, I'll use part of it or what. And I'm like, 
I'm just not going to pay $14 a month for patterns and I not know if I'm going to like them or want them. It's a great deal. I mean, I get a minimum of two patterns um, for it. And um, we also received the Nashville freebie, which I'll show you um, from her on the pa for being Patreon. But I was like, I'm, I'm not going to continue that. Uh, if I want one of her patterns, sorry, no, outside the window, things keep moving and keep grabbing my attention. The, um, if I want one of her patterns, I'll just buy her pattern. I know I get a discount if I'm a Patreon member and everything, but like, I'm, I'm not continuing that. I, mm -mm. So at any rate, since I knew I was, I got a discount on some of her patterns, um, while I'm still a member until tomorrow, um, I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of her patterns. So I got Let Love Rain. So here's that pattern. I'll insert it. And I also got the USA Star Ornament. And as I was going through the Nashville list of different um, designers, I was finding some free patterns. So I'll start inserting some of the patterns and kind of flip through kind of quickly here. Um, Primitive Hair, um, I found a bunch of free patterns there. Um, the Tiny Moderist, October House, Glendon Pet, yeah, Glendon Place, and Tempting Tangles. While I was over at Tempting Tangles looking for freebies, I fell in love with a pattern, and that is the, uh, it's called Flowers, I believe. Wow, insert the picture here, and you can see whatever the name is, the real name is. Um, but yeah, it's the, but I love the, the little book. That you can make the little like book and I was like oh, that'd be so cool because I could have it on the little tear tray thing and just kind of like flip it to the page of whatever that month is so I was like ah oh, that'd be so cute that's a display I love it it doesn't take up much room and yeah so um so yes yeah, so I purchased that I don't know when I'm gonna get to stitching those <sighs> go on the list <laughs> okay and then I got in the mail on the 21st of February, I get lovable petites from my crazy Annie club. So they're cute and everything, but I'm done with Valentine's Day now. So they'll go in my stash until next year. So it's not the end of the world, but I was a little bit disappointed that it, um, that it took beyond the time. I mean, I was, I paid for this in January 3rd and to get it on February, you know, 21st for a February stitch. Yeah. I canceled that membership too. <laughs> I'm, I'm really slimming down on things. It's like, I'd rather choose what I want to choose. And she went to charge me for the next uh, petite, which is some kind of B one. And I'm like, there are so many B patterns out there and so much, but I don't need petite bees. I've got all kinds of gardening uh, ones like flowers and flower gardens and stuff like that that have bees and stuff and if I wanted to just take the bee out of it or just take the one flower and a bee out and make it my own petite I can so I was like yeah no done so I canceled out of that membership too so I'm saving all kinds of money see look at me I said I was my whole my check checking account didn't like it but see there I'm saving money yeah <laughs> we'll go with that <laughs> all right here is the April month of month. I got that one in. I don't like daffodils. I do not like them. I think they are smelly and I don't like them on top of it being, yeah, just a whole lot of yellow and yeah, no, not me at all. So spring will be in April's place. So it'll be March and April will be the spring pattern once I get it complete because not for me giveaway basket so you'll be seeing it again so I won't be doing that one um, as part of fabric of the month club and I understand shippings and all this other kind of thing but to me if you're going to if you're gonna have a fabric of the month club it's a mystery anyway you should have enough fabric to cover whatever the orders are like in advance, like whatever you think you're going to send out in January, you should have that stuff in stock in like November or whatever. 
And if something better comes along, switch it up, but at least have something to send out. I was charged in December, before Christmas in December for this and just got it. And it's like, and when I asked her, because I was charged in January for February shipment, and I was like, I haven't even received last month. Oh yeah, we're waiting on a shipment of, of the fabric. You should have fabric. <laughs> I don't get that. It's a mystery fabric of the month. Send me something. It doesn't have to be the same thing as somebody else gets because I don't know what somebody else gets. Send me something. So I'm like, yeah. So I paid for February's and I haven't gotten February's yet. I mean, it's only the 28th of February. Why would I get February's in February? So I said, cancel me. I don't want any more if you can't send them on time. Um, I did join a quarterly fabric club through, an, through uh, my local LNS, which is actually two hours away. But I did join that one and maybe that'll work out better because I wasn't too happy with the way that was working out. Now, I'm not being too picky, am I? I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm just so used to Amazon and other places that, you know, one, two, three, I order, I get it within a week. It, I just, I hate waiting forever. And some of these, you know, places are all, oh, support your local needle workshop. And I want to, but if you can't get me what I want, how can I support you? Or if you make me wait two months when I can get it in a week somewhere else, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. I'll shut up now. My fabric of the month. <laughs> Let me take it out of the bag. It's a pretty fabric. I'm happy with it. Um, it is called Sand. And it is by Fiber on a Whim. And it is 14 count. And it's real pretty. I mean, look at that marbling in it. It is very pretty. I just don't like the delay in getting it to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me. All right. Let me put this away. Hold on. All right, so off of Amazon, <laughs> I ordered this and got it in two days. Um, the Blackbird Design in a Friendship's Way. I love, love, love. I want to make this one into a little pin cushion. That I don't know what I'm going to make that into, but I love it. Not sure about this one. Uh, let me see. Are there more designs on the back? There's a bunch of strawberries in there. Um, which they give the patterns for and everything because you know how that's how it goes with her patterns. Let's see here. The so there's a bunch of different strawberries to do and a sampler. So I'm really happy with it. It's that one I how I could do because look, it's broken up. There's got some bricks and some other things in there. So that house I could actually do. And cute little buttons on it. So that's a possibility. But I do like, um, well worth the money for this one. Um, Amazon, under 20. I want to say 17, 18, something like that. But yeah, under 20. And I had purchased last month this bag but it was in green so I bought another one that's blue so I have another one of these bags where you put the you can put something in the front pocket and another in the middle pocket so I really like that pattern bag was easy to use so it worked out well so I got another one so let's see what else oh I got I'll put insert a picture because it there I don't have them loose anymore I already organized them um, but I have my, uh, I got 20 weeks dye works from one, two, three, uh, to help in my organization and stuff. But there were things that I needed for other patterns in the future. So I got those and like I said, I inserted a picture of it here. Um, I also got bobbins and floss drops from Adam Hart. And I'll show you those, um, as I'm organizing, as I get to my organized section. So, Nashville pre-order. 
first thing is MTV Cross Stitch Designs, and it is the Spring Birdhouse Sewing Box. I love it. Look at that. Look. I'm going to put the picture in there. Look at the picture. Oh my gosh. It's, I need that finish. I need that. I love it. I don't know if I can finish it or if I'm going to have to send it off to be finished like that. <laughs> but check that out. I love it. But what I love more is my next one. This is the Jeanette Douglas Tapestry of Stitches. And to make it worse, I got the floss too. And apparently they're silks and things because, yeah, it was not cheap. But, hey, I canceled out some of those monthly memberships. So that should count for something. Um, <laughs> But I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All those, look at different stitches, different specialty stitches and things like that. And they're kind of like in a, yeah. Love, 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 love. Can't wait to get that. Um, next one is the Silver Creek Samplers Freebie. The play on the words, the whole summertime bees, and it being patriotic. I was like, oh my gosh, totally have to have that one. Told you I fell down another rabbit hole, peeps. Fell down. Hard. <laughs> but one last one. So that's not too bad. I bought four. But yeah, one of them was quite high. That Jeanette Douglas one. <laughs> okay. But the Tiny Moderate Crab Dance. And in my living room, I've got a armoire. I guess it's called. I call it a glass cased cabinet. But I guess it's got a fancier name than that but at any rate um it's got a bunch of beach things in there because you know I live right here about uh, close to the beach and I saw that crab dance and I was like oh my gosh that would be so cute in there I don't have any stitching in there at all I just got different little knickknack type of stuff so the crab dance will be so cute in there so I'll just frame it and stick it in there but yeah I thought that was so adorable all right so today is the last day to download um, February and the Love Heart um, from the website or the Facebook group. Links in the description below for those. Um, I had sent two charts to Sweetwater Stitcher um, for her one year floss tube event. She's got a massive giveaway going on. I think she had 16, 17, a, a large number, almost 20. Of um, things that she was giving away if you haven't already go watch her video see what you can get from you know enter to win and get some of the free beats she was giving away really a lot of nice patterns and stuff two of them are mine <laughs> were those the nicest ones no I'm teasing <laughs> um, let's see here March freebie I will be uploading it tomorrow and again, you can get it on the website and the um, Facebook group. I'll remember. Uh, and it's called Flower Power. So here's a picture of that. And here it is stitched up. Um, Kimberly Murphy had stitched it last year. She won it um, in one of the giveaways and said stitched it. So... There's some pictures of it being, of it stitched as well. The Biscorn U is finished. Already has it. Um, I think she's sending it out to retreat people this week. Um, I don't have a mock-up of it because it would look funky in the mock-up because it wouldn't be a Biscorn U. It would just be a square. Um, so I didn't do any mock-ups of it. I've got mine kitted. So I'll start working on mine soon. She's already working on hers. And uh, yeah, she promised me that she'd do my Discord new for me. <laughs> so I'll get that to her once I get it stitched. So I got to get that stitched up. Um, that's one of my starts for next month, which starts tomorrow. Um, yeah, March already. Man, the year flies by. Okay, so October. Uh, October, yeah. <sighs> octagon the octagon um stitch design that i did that carol was stitching she finished it last week here's some pictures here's the picture of the octagon followed by her stitched ones so that turned out beautiful and i had sent 
uh, Kimberly Murphy a bookmark to stitch up for a practice stitch for me and she got that done so here's a picture of that um, she's got her own YouTube channel it's called that one stitcher followed by some numbers 171 something like that at any rate I'll have her linked below go check out her YouTube she's a new stitcher give her love um, she hasn't been stitching for very long or we got to get her on the linen or even weave she's she's an Ada girl right now but we're gonna get her moved over have her do a few pieces um, but it's all good Kim <laughs> oh goodness so I'm almost done like all I gotta do is just look at the colors on the colorway of um, a bunny design it is so cute um, it's got a bunny and it's got some florals in it it's really cute um, she's gonna stitch that up for me uh, once I get the mock-up done on that um, I'll share it next video but she's gonna stitch that one up so stay tuned for that um, and what else do I have? Oh, I've got um, a teapot pattern I'm working on. So, so I'm working on some designs. I'm getting ready as spring comes barreling at me, busy in the wedding business. So trying to get some designs kind of ready to roll because I might not be doing designs too much for a little while with that going on. Let's talk organization. All of my DMCs are done. Yes, that was my goal for February to have the DMCs done, and they are. They're on my little Bisley drawer over there. Um, so yeah, all done. Yes, it's exciting. So then I attacked Classic Color Works and Week Style Works. And I used a suggestion from the last video about putting them on floss drops on a hanger <laughs> in my closet and it works perfectly so what I do what I did well let me go back a step sorry guys I jumped ahead for the DMC I also have the colors I have marked so that I can easily check and see if I have it in stock or not or if I need to go get it so I got this list from Etsy. I don't know where it's from, just put in DMC color chart list or whatever. I think it was like $2, something stupid like that. And you can print it off and you can just check off what you have. Or if I have it somewhere, like some of my Biscorn, you I didn't want to like just pull a few thoughts off. So on like my Biscorn, you ones, let's see yeah, right there. I just put like a little B so I would know that that's in the Biscorn, you. So I have it, but it's not in the drawers. It's in the Biscorn new bag. So if I'm looking for it for some other project, I know where it's at. So that works out well for knowing where my flosses are, where and stuff. Um, usually I just pull a couple threads off and put it on and use that for while I'm stitching. But if I pull the whole thing, then I mark it. So it's easy to find. So. For week style works, I printed off this from the week style works. It's actually an order form. And this way I can mark down the colors I have. So when I'm looking at other charts and I'm about ready to cut up something, I'm like, oh, do I have that color? I can just pull this and see, do I have that color? And if it's somewhere else, like here it says H. And then I have my key so I don't forget what H means. It means holiday. <laughs> so I'm up that holiday of seasons, I think is what the pattern's called. That's where it's at. So it's like, if I need it, I can find easily grab it and find it. And then I have them hanging on floss drops. They're marked with these labels that I got from Etsy, where it gives you the number, the name, everything. So then they fit on a multitude of different floss drops. So like there's a different floss drop there's a different floss drop so these are just on miscellaneous floss drops and they're in alphabetical order right now they all fit on one ring when they don't I'll split up the alphabet and put them on two rings no problem they stay nice neat tidy 
and I have them placed on a hanger and hang them in the closet. Works perfect. So, thank you for the suggestion of Pat Hansen. She went into a bit more description on how she does it, and that's how I kind of modified it for me. Um, and then for the classic color works, basically the same thing. Um, I believe I got this list of the colors from the Classic Color Works website. And again, same thing. I just mark it. Um, if I've got multiple, yeah, multiple, ugh, my mouth is going quicker, or my mind is going quicker than my mouth is what happens. Slow down, take a deep breath, Penny. Um, if I've got multitude, is what word I was trying to go with. I just lost the light. There we go. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> that's weird. Um, if I have multiple skeins of a certain color, we'll go with that word instead. Um, I just put a plus. Like, I have so many black coffee, it's ridiculous. Each one of those month to month, they send me like three or four skeins because they have the solid words in, in all the black coffee, which I don't put it in the black coffee because that much black would drive me insane. So I usually use something different. So now I've got all these skeins of black coffee. But rather than sitting there and saying I've got a hundred skeins, I just put a plus sign. And then I've got them in a bag in a drawer. And that way it's like once I erase a one because I've used it. I can always grab another skein out. So I just put a plus there so I know I've got some extra in my extra thing. And then again, if they're somewhere, like the B, so it's like I've got it, but it's a B, and then down here, my code B is for bunny. Um, so one thing, B is Biscorn U. That's why I said I would get confused on what, what what's the B for. So I put a little code, and it's in pencil so I can erase it. It's not a problem. Um, so this is my little inventory sheet and then these are the floss wrap I love these I wish I would have done this with the weak style works but I didn't so I may switch it over I may not but then I have to buy the new little labels again and it's like it's fine for now but these are the floss drops that I got from the Adam Hart and they have the little spare, like when you can use more of like that two strand section, because these are variegated, they're, you're using them in two, well, even if you are stitching with five with one, if you've got enough left over, because of course this, these threads aren't cheap, that you could go ahead and hang it on to here. I mean, I don't worry about that with DMC for too much, because it's DMC, who cares? It's 60 cents a skein if I'm gonna throw away a piece this big, I don't care. Um, but these are more expensive, so I do care. So I, I can be cheap <laughs> and save them on that little spot right there. Uh, but they've got the labels just like the other ones do. And then they're filed alphabetically. This one here is getting close to needing to be broken up. So, but that's all my classic color works. So it's alphabetical, but still on a ring and everything. And again, it's got a hanger and hangs up in the closet. So that's probably more information than you really wanted to know about my organization. But if it helps somebody else out there or gives somebody else some ideas, then it was worth it. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So my accountability. Yeah, I'll, I'll go accountability for now. We'll talk about that during life updates. But accountability is where we're going. So in February, what were my February goals? My February goals were to touch on all my whips. And I did. So I'm very happy about that. Um, my goal is to finish the February month of the year. I didn't. Um, the Love by Shepherd's Bush, which I did. Um, March, which I decided to UFO. And the Rose Cupcake. I did finish that one. So two out of four. Um, yeah. Uh, I put the March and I know I meant month to month March but I could cheat and say well I was planning on the March month of the year that I showed you but even that one's not done even though it's like over halfway done it's still not done so either way it's not done 
Um, so that's not too bad. I planned on for my start uh, work start learning on the hard anger, which I did. Um, my summer fairy, the bunny, and summer acorns. So I got all of those started plus a couple extra. So that's not bad. On organization, I said I was going to finish the DMC, and I did that plus the other two. Um, all I've got left are some of my are very small collections of like um, Dinky Dyes, uh, Valdani, Gloriana silks, um, basically my silks and things like that. So I need to, and I'm going to do them just like the hangers. That's the easiest way. And since I've got so few of them, I'm not going to download the whole list of them. I'm just going to like on a Word document, just write down what I have and put that in there. So I, that's not going to take me long. I should be able to get that done in March. Um, for, let's see here. Yes, that was my February goals and I completed most of them. I don't think I did too bad for March. My very main thing for March, no spend. I am not buying anything. If I don't have the thread, I bet I can find something that's comparable. That's how much I am not spending any money on anything in March because Nashville cost me a good amount from that tapery of stitches kit. But so I am, and I've been buying a lot of flosses and stuff like that. And so I have a no spend March. Now the May month to month is gonna hit. So that's a subscription that doesn't count. I randomly get a stitching with the friends from the silver needle that I still belong to. And I never know when that's going to come. I don't know if that's going to come in March or April. But so that one might hit in March. Um, I think those are the only clubs that I have that might hit. Um, I might get charged for that quarterly fabric in March for April shipment or something. I'm not sure. So there might be a couple club things that hit. But I'm not ordering anything or buying anything at all. So let's see how I do with that. That's my like main goal for March is no buy, no spend, nothing. And April's my birthday month, so I'm going to give myself free reign. <laughs> as long as I succeed in March, I can have free reign in April. <laughs> okay. For finishing, I want to finish the March month of the year. I want to have that done um, by the middle of the month. And same thing with the spring, uh, stitching with the housewives, that new pattern. I want to have that one done. Those are my only finishes that, I mean, granted, I'll take all the finishes I can get. But those are the only ones I'm planning on getting. Um, my whips, I want to touch on all my whips again. Minus the Haid, uh, my Heaven and Earth design, my full coverage. The more I think, I'm just... It's going in timeout. I just can't. I'm not enjoying it. It's an obligation. It's like, well, it's a whip. You have to touch it. You have to put at least two hours into it, Penny. Make yourself do it on a Sunday afternoon. Just get through these two hours, then you can stitch something you want to stitch. And stitching time shouldn't be like that. So it's just going to go in timeout for a little while. Um, while I'm stitching some of these smalls and seasonals and things like that. And then maybe later on, on a rainy day or something, I'll be like, hey, I haven't seen that in a while. Let me pull that out. That's the way I want it to be. So right now, it's just going to go and time out for a bit. But everything else, I want to make sure I touch and keep prog progress going on them. But on that one, I really could care less. If ended up trashing it and never touching it again. It'd be like, oh, well, I tried full coverage. Wasn't really too much for me. Maybe I picked the wrong pattern. I don't know. Um... Still debating on that one. I actually have a flag by Stitching with Jewels that is full coverage. And I'm very curious to see how that one comes out. Um, as far as will it be better than... Will I like it better? Will I do it more? Will it... So I'm kind of holding off on that. So it's like, okay, I've got that full coverage coming my way. Let's just kind of put this one on the back burner. Maybe it's the pattern. Maybe it's the process of full coverage. I don't know which one it is at this point. Um... Wow, that was like a long story just to say that I'm going to put that one in time out, wasn't it? Goodness gracious, y'all have to put up with me. Okay, so what am I planning to start? I am planning to start 
the April, April Little House. So I'm going to finish the March one and I'm going to start up on the April one. So I want to get that month one done. Um, I'm going to do this house, the Owl Forked Embroidery. This is one of the freebies, the little house that I'm going to use my silks on. Um, so I want to get that started. And of course this little egg, this is one of the freebies I just showed you, the Glendon Place egg, Easter egg. I want to do that one. I'll start that one up in uh, March as well. And this is crazy. This little egg, it is only like just under four across and just under five um, up. 33 colors in there. 33. It took me forever to get it. But you see how like the dark blue fades into a light blue and the dark green fades into a light green. Yeah. I think there's about six colors of yellow through here. And some of the colors were like just that purple egg. That's the only purple in the entire thing is that one egg. <laughs> yeah. So 33 colors in there plus three Krynix. So yeah, but I love it. It's so pretty. And so I can't wait to stitch it up. So I got it kitted. It's ready to go. So that one is um, also a start in March and my Biscorn U. So I'll be doing the Biscorn U, the birdhouse, the month of year, April, and the egg. Those are my planned starts for March. Um, and I want to finish getting those fancy flosses, my silks organized. So that's also in my March plans. Okay, so giveaway winners. Last week I had asked um, you how you organize your threads. Many of you are still using the plastic boxes and that works for you perfect. They've been around forever for a reason, right? Um, I just like the hangy down floss. And like I said, I like the one that I found with Adam Hart where they're bobbins for storing, but they're floss drops for using. And I've gotten to the point now where it's like I'm taking them off those floss drops and just using a couple strands in different ways. Um, Fauna Pfeiffer did a video where she was showing the plastic things and I was laughing because I already got those from Amazon. I use those things all the time. And that way you can just kind of, I usually take a piece of paper and tape it down and write down what the numbers are. Or sometimes I use um, a sheet of a sticker, um, sticker, yeah. I call it sticker paper. It's um, a, like a full sheet label and then you can cut it to size and use that. So I use that sometimes, um, but yeah, at any rate, went, went well off on a tangent on, oh, organizing thread, that's what I was on tangent about, yeah, okay, I was trying to think of where I was even going with that. any rate, the winner of the surprise package is Pat Hansen. I already have your um, email, I have, well, yeah, I've got your email, but I've also got your uh, mailing address, I've already got it closed up it's going to be happy mail for you so you'll see when you get it it's already packaged up sealed addressed and in my mail pile to go out tomorrow so you'll be getting that shortly um, I hope you enjoy that um, I still have not heard from Leona the gammy stitcher um, so that wolf pattern will go back into the giveaway basket because it's been over a month now and still have not heard from her um, I know I need to set up a new form, but the email me is working most of the time. It's just, and I can't leave comments anymore because of the hackers. So this weekend I decided that I am going to do a self challenge. Um, I'm going to do six projects in 12 hours. So I guess that'd be a six by 12 is the way people refer to it. Um, between 4 PM Friday and midnight on Sunday. I will stitch on six projects, two hours each. I don't know which six yet. Probably a mixture of whips and starts. Um, I'm curious how much I can get done on each project for two hour time periods, because sometimes I stitch for one hour, sometimes I stitch for three or four hours in a sitting. Um, so I'm not really sure how much I get done at any time. So it'll be interesting to hang and have it. Okay, two hours, you stop. Pick up the next one, two hours, you know. And like I said, it might be, 
two hours in the morning and then go do something for half the day, come back and do another two hours in the afternoon or whatever. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I usually don't do any kind of timed things. Um, I'm not going to have a hashtag or anything like that. It's just a personal challenge. Um, I originally was going to do a 12 by 24. I was like, oh, that'd be awesome to do 12 projects in 24 hours over the course of the weekend. But that's when the mister was going to go on a fishing and camping trip that he's now saying he's probably not going to go on. And I'm like, I needed a weekend to myself. I needed a good city weekend, but okay. Instead, I'll be drug around with you doing whatever, and that's fine too. Family's time's important, right? Alone time's important too. <laughs> so at any rate, I cut it back to a six by 12 so that I can have more chance of a success because a 12 by 24 probably is not gonna happen. Now I might end up with an eight by 16, who knows? I'm just gonna do as many projects as I can in two hour spurts and see what happens. Um, I might do a quick video next week um, with an update. So, yeah, we'll see how that happens. Um, I am not on social media much. And I think it's mainly because, well, one, I don't have time. I watch Floss too, but I comment on videos. Um, I do have Facebook pages. I've got Instagram pages. I've got... I don't really... I mean, I... I I'm on them I do things with them but it's very sporadic maybe once or twice a week if that I just I don't make time for it and I think it's a lot of it has to do with just there's mean people out there I think well I mean yeah I know there's mean people out there that's not the I think <laughs> there are mean people out there and why people think they can say and do mean things I don't know um, it's not from my generation. My generation, we didn't do all the social media and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of not natural to begin with. So trying to do the social stuff, I'm very, I mean, what you see is what you get, but on the same token, I'm pretty filtered. I don't tell everybody everything about my life or me or whatever. Sorry, husband came inside and was all something about spilling coffee on his shirt and things. At any rate, um, I was just on a tangent on my own little soapbox about social media. Um, it, it's a good thing for people to, you know, communicate and feel like they're part and stuff. I'm not like totally against it, but I don't put much out there. Um, yeah. I was watching Vonna Pfeiffer's video yesterday and the beginning of her video like the first 10 minutes she's doing nothing but apologizing and qualifying or changing or explaining different things because people were like attacking her on the different social media outlets to include YouTube about how could you say this how could you say that blah 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 people get a life why why does it matter I'm in South Carolina. I'm, a, I'm. We drive up to North Carolina mountains all the time. You've seen some of my mountain trips and everything. And I was always underneath the assumption that Mount Mitchell was the tallest peak on the eastern seaboard, on the eastern coast. So when she said she was at Mount Washington in Ham, where was it? New Hampshire, and it was the highest peak, I was like, huh? I thought Mount Mitchell was, hmm. And I went on to the and she was attacked by people. How dare you? How don't you know? Da, 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 da. Why? What difference does it make? I didn't give a shit. I just went on stitching. I mean, who cares? If it really meant that much to me, I might have Googled it and I'd be like, oh, nope, it is Mount, Mount Mitchell is. Oh, okay. And I still wouldn't have said anything to her about it. Why? What difference does it make? I, I, I don't get it. Um, so you don't see much of me on social media for that reason. And I hope everybody out there continues to be kind to others. I know a lot of you are like, be kind, be kind, you know, and everything. And now I know I already says that at the end of all of our videos, because obviously people aren't kind all the time. Um, yeah. So my soapbox is over with. 
Um, that was part, I guess, of my life update. Not really my life, but just kind of my overall feelings. And I figured I'd stick it at the end because I'm sure this issue is a continued thing with between the hacking and that's like mean people again and people just need, leaving mean comments and stuff like that or trying to correct you. I'm I'm, everything I say might not be correct. I might miss say something. You know what? It is what it is, people. I, I just, I don't see <laughs> your boat at the door. <laughs> I shut the door now. He's all, oh, I want it now. Of course, right? Um, speaking of Bo, let me put a couple of pictures of him in here for you so you can see him. Here's him right after being groomed. And, um, and I've got another one. We were sitting outside on the porch and he was all panting because we had been playing. Uh, it's been gorgeous here. I'm sorry that people up north and um, I guess back west, northwest, are getting bad weather. We're in the gorgeous low 80s. We've been in the 80s, uh, high 70s, low 80s for like the past two weeks. It's, it's gorgeous outside, <laughs> other than the pollen. We're getting the pollen right now. Um, I gotta go take a Claritin before I go outside again. The, uh, cause yeah, uh, pollen. And I can't open up the windows. I hate it. It's like, it's beautiful, but I can't open up the windows cause then my house will be full of pollen. Yeah. So there's my downfall. And you're like, yeah, Penny, shut up. It's 70, 80 degrees there. And you're complaining about the pollen as you're like shoveling the snow. <laughs> See, there's always something bad about the weather. Y'all complain about the snow. I complain about the pollen. Um, no, it's gorgeous. Everything's blooming. Um, azaleas are blooming right now. Um, I should get some really gorgeous elopement pictures here uh, this week uh, with all those azaleas out. and everything. So I'm not complaining about it at all. I sat outside for about mm, 20 minutes before I did this video reading a chapter of my book. Just kind of hanging out outside, getting a little bit of sunshine, getting some vitamin D in me. Um, so it's, I'm not complaining, but well, I am complaining about the pollen. I washed my car and three hours later it's covered in pollen again, but <laughs> I will complain about that. And of course my allergies are going to go insane. So there's always weather woes, but that's okay. I would rather have the pollen issue than snow and everything else. I just know this has happened before where we get a couple of nice weeks of these seventies and eighties. And then all of a sudden we're hit with a whammy and all of a sudden we were like ice storm and all the bridges around here are closed down and all the, as long as it doesn't happen on a wedding day, I don't care. <laughs> I'll have an inside day. I'm having issues trying to get my computer work done. I haven't started on editing Thursdays. Was it Thursday that I had weddings? Yeah, Thursdays. Weddings. I had two weddings on Thursday. And I've got them to edit, and I just have not got the gumption up to get it done. Um, it's just too pretty outside. I want to be outside. I don't want to be stuck at the computer. So y'all are lucky I'm doing, even doing the video, because, yeah, I don't want to be in front of the computer anymore. Now I'm going to have to edit it. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can get Mr. Bowen here for you. Come on. Come on. Why are you back up? Hmm? You're not gonna fall for it? Hmm? No? <laughs> That's as much a bow you're gonna get. <laughs> you're not falling for my trick of looking. I got something in my hand. <laughs> Like, mm -mm. not today, Mama. Not today. Hmm. Can you give Mama a pet? Get a pet from you? Get a pet from you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Um, I said I might come back to you next week with an update on the stitching I've done. But if not, then um, I'll see you in two weeks.